Okay, in this video, we're going to cover 14.2, which I believe is the double integrals for volume. Um, oh, God. These are definitely, if they don't give me a picture, I have to draw the thing. Okay, there's only eight, but they're, they're pretty heavy. So even though there's only eight boulders to lift, there's still boulders I got to lift. Okay. So this one says, sketch the region and evaluate the integrated integral. So we have um, 0, 2, 0, 1. And then we have 1 minus 2x plus 8y. And then we have dy dx. OK, so the region R in region is just given by these bounds. OK, that's the region that's been given. And if I were to draw that. It's basically telling me that the y's are going to go from 0 to 1, but the x's are going to go from 0 to 2. So that means I'm talking about this region in the xy plane. OK, so yes, I know there's a third dimension z that's coming off of this, right? This is the my pencil is the positive z axis. OK, and so it's basically this rectangle going forever up and forever down, right? But they're bounding it by this particular um, function in three-dimensional space, okay? So it will chop off that rectangle at some point. Now, um, I think that's all they asked me to do is just to figure out the region, which is this region. And then once I know that region, I actually have to um, figure out the integrals, okay? So, this means that the y is going from 0 to 1, and the x is going from 0 to 2. And so that's the little picture that I drew. Now I'm actually going to integrate it. So let me focus. I have to do this. That's just me. Some people don't need to be so particular, but the colors really do help me because I'm very visual. Um, the integral of 1 with respect to y is 1. 2xy and then 8y squared over 2 or just 4y squared from 0 to 1 dx. So I get um, 1 minus 2x plus 4 minus 0 minus 0 plus 0. So this is a big fat zero, which means I get five minus two X. And if I integrate that, I get five X minus X squared from zero to two. I get two X squared over two, but then the twos cancel. So when I plug in two, I get 10 minus four. And when I plug in the zeros, I get zeros. So this is a big fat zero. The answer is six. I would have never known that, but it is. It is what it is. I would have never guessed that. Okay, moving on. Now we have something different. Okay. So here, from here on out, the rest of the semester is where I lose everybody. People probably have been doing pretty good with stuff before. And then once we start into getting all this crazy three-dimensional space is where I start to lose folks. So I really try to take my time and explain things very thoroughly. Because when I was taking it, no one explained it to me thoroughly. They just said, oh, here's all the information. Go at it. Um, but when you get it explained thoroughly, or even if you figure out how to explain it yourself thoroughly, um, that's where the comprehension happens, okay? So I'm gonna keep going. Now, remember, these are my X bounds, okay? So my variable here is X, which means that X equals three and X equals Y over two, okay? Now, again, I'm not used to graphing things like this, so I'm gonna multiply both sides by two, and I get 2x equals y, or y equals 2x. 
that I can graph, okay? So if I were to graph that, um, here, if I plug in zero, I get zero. If I plug in one, I get two, right? If I plug in two, I get four. And then if I plug in three, and the only reason I'm going all the way to three is because x equals three, I would get um, six, which is about right here. Mm, it landed on my thing, so let me move this. Um, that means y equals two x. Okay, so good enough. I'm trying to make it straight. I can never come to a straight. I hate this. Here's the graph paper on the other side. Anyway, that's it. And then this, this is x equal to 30. Okay. Now, really, it does extend this way. And doesn't this one extend that way? Okay. So it does go forever in that direction, forever in this direction, forever in that direction, and forever in this direction. Okay. Those two lines I have graphed. Okay. Now I'm going to graph these. Now remember, these are y's, right? These are y values. So I have y equal to 6 and y equal to 0. Well, guess what? Those are horizontal lines, y equal to 0 and y equal to 6. And so it bounds me. The only place that is bounded by all four of those lines is in here, right? I'm bounded from here to here and from here to here, OK? And so then which image is that? It looks like this one. No, it needs to go all the way. It needs to go over to three and up to six. So it's actually this graph, okay? And then you could use your area formula to figure that out, or you can actually evaluate this, okay? So if we use geometry, this is very, very straight, straight, straight. So the area of a triangle is one half the base times the height which in this case is going to be the base here is three units and the height here is six units. And so then we get three times three, which is nine. So I know the answer is gonna be nine, but actually, no, I don't. All I know is the area of the region is nine. Um, I don't know what the area with respect to the three dimensional spaces. So do not do this. And I do have students that have tried to do that. And now we know why it don't work. Um, because you remember, you have a three-dimensional figure coming off of this region. This region is just bounding your three-dimensional figure, OK? So we actually have to integrate that three-dimensional figure, the x plus y. So let's do the actual integration, 0 to 6, and then my integral, my blah, 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 my variable is x. So this is x squared over 2 plus y times x from y over 2 to 3. Then when I plug in my bounds, I get um, 3 squared, or no, yeah, 3 goes in for x. So this becomes 9 over 2 plus 3y minus Oh gosh, y over 2 squared plus y times y over 2. This one's pretty complicated. So I have 9 halves plus 3y. This would be y squared over 4. And then if I stick the 4 down there, it's actually y squared over 8. Then this one is just plus, oh no, negative here, so it's minus y squared over 2. Now, I like to combine my like terms, but some people will just integrate it and then go from there. So what is negative 1 eighth minus 1 over 2? I get negative 5 eighths y squared. Yeah, right, 4 eighths and then 1 eighth make negative 5 eighths. OK, cool. So then now let me make sure. I always have to double check that I'm recording because sometimes I, I don't know. I have recorded whole lectures and never um, 
hit record. So I technically didn't record anything, but I thought I was recording. <laughs> and then went through the whole problem and never even had to do the whole thing again. It happens. Okay, so let's integrate this with respect to y. That means we're going to get nine halves y plus three y squared over two minus five eighths y cubed over three from zero to six. So that if I plug in six, I'm gonna have nine halves times six plus three times 36 over two minus five times six to the third, I think it's 216, but let me make sure, yeah. 216 over those two together, which is 24. Subtract nine halves times zero plus three times zero over two minus five over 24 times zero. It's one big fat zero. So that is three, which gives me 27. That is 18, three times 18. Oops, I hit divide. It is plus 54. And then five times 216 divided by 24 is 45. And I get 36. So not the nine that I would have gotten with the region, right? It was just the area of the region. Then I'd have to multiply by the height and supposedly the height is four. And so that's how we get 36 as our volume. Okay, yay. Now let's work on number three. Okay, we are on number three. Sorry, I had to pause the video. My, my kid goes to high school here and I probably said it in one of the videos, but they just, her and her friend just came in my room. I had to pause it because they're loud. Okay, um, there we go. So, but I kicked them out, so now we can keep going. <laughs> Let's see, oh gosh. So I'm gonna focus on here. And this means that I'm gonna use blue for X, okay? So for X, we're gonna say X equals the square root of Y. And if I square both sides, X squared equals Y, or Y equals X squared. And then for the other one, we have X equal to one third. Yeah, I have graphing paper this time, so hopefully I don't murder it too much. Okay, so y equals to x squared, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4. And so it looks like this. And then of course it has the other side too, right? I don't know if I'm gonna need the other side. So that's why I always draw the whole graph of this, okay? Now X equal to one third, if this is one, one third is like in here. And that means I have a graph that goes this way. Okay, and then it's saying, Oh, my bad. It's not one third. It's one third Y. I just caught that right now. And I'm glad I caught that now and not after trying to do everything. So <laughs> this is one third Y. And if I solve for Y, I have to multiply by three. So I get three Y. Now that makes sense. So this is not my graph. I was like, how am I going to go all the way to nine if this is like just this tiny little region, right? It didn't make any sense. So I was confused thinking something was not right. And I was correct. I wrote down the wrong problem. So um, when 
Oh, let me. I don't know why I put the three over there. That's not correct. Um, if I multiply both sides by three, I actually end up with three X equal to Y or Y equal to three X. So zero times three, zero, one times three is three and two times three is six. So this is a line going this direction. Again, I'm trying to draw straight, but I can never do this correctly. So you've got this going that way, okay? I don't know where they're gonna intersect. So let me figure out where they're gonna intersect. So when is three X going to equal X squared? Um, Hmm. I get zero and three, but that's not true. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Three times three. Mm -hmm. So watch when I plug in three here, I get nine. And when I plug in three here, I get nine. So that explains it. So they do touch somewhere up here at nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It would be like up there somewhere. So supposedly my uh, quadratic just keeps going up there, okay? And so then my y values are going from zero to nine, which is from zero all the way up to there. So I have rectangles going this way, right? From, um, from this one, the line, it's going from the line to the curve. So from the line to the curve, left to right, and then the rectangles themselves are going from the bottom to the top, which is y value zero to nine, okay? And so that is the region there, which matches this graph. And oh gosh, now I actually have to evaluate this. Okay, of course, right? Because they want us to practice this. So I am integrating with respect to x first, which means this guy is a constant. So it's y squared times x cubed over three from these bounds. I'm just gonna put y over three. I just like it better that way. So, and then I go and change that to a three. It should be y. Um, when I plug in this one, it's going to be, um, square root of y cubed over three minus y over three cubed over three. So bear with me, I do have to simplify this. So I get y squared times y to the three halves over three minus y squared. I'm gonna put the three over here because I wanna cube this. So I get y cubed over 27. I definitely need to fix this because I cannot integrate it when it's like that. So I add these exponents and I get one third y to the seven halves. And then here I get one over, what is three times 27? One and I get y to the fifth. So if I integrate that, I'm going to have one third y to the nine halves divided by nine halves minus one over 81 and then y to the six over six evaluated from zero to nine. So if I flip this over, it's gonna be um, the two is going to go on the top, and the three times the nine is 27. And then y to the nine halves minus y to the six. What is 81 times six? Again, I could probably plug it in my calculator, but I'm not. 
I like to just do it on paper. Okay, so we have nine to the nine halves minus one over 48, nine to the six power minus zero to any power times, it's just gonna be zero, zero times this is zero. I'm just subtracting a big zero. So we get two over 27 times, what's three to the power nine? This really big number divided by 27 times two. So for that first number, all I get is one, four, five, eight. Now for the second number, one over 48, parentheses, nine raised to the six. Oh, that is not a nice number. Oh, so I guess I'm gonna have to keep it the way it is, nine to the six power is five, three, one, four, four, one over 48. It's not reducing it for me. So let me see. Five, three, one, four, four, one divided by three is uh, one, seven, seven, one, four, seven. And then 48 divided by three is 16. And I don't think anything else is going to go in that because that's odd and this is even. So one, four, five, eight minus this fraction. It says type in a decimal or an exact exact decimal or a fraction. So I got this and this is an exact decimal. And so I'm just going to type in that and see what I get. Uh, that doesn't look right, but I'm going to try it and then I'm pretty sure this is wrong, but whatever. Um, it might just be that the Z part of the function is below the X, Y plane. And so then that causes the error to be negative, but, or the volume to be negative, but that's not the case. Okay, so I did something wrong. Let me make sure my problem is correct. So I have zero to nine, where did we go? I have zero to nine, one third y to the square root of y and then that. So I did the integral with respect to x. So I kept that guy and it was x cubed over three. This is y over three, that's the square root of y. So I have the y squared times this, y squared times that guy cubed over three. And then y squared times y to the three halves, because you have one half times three, which gives you three halves. Then here you get y cubed over three to the third power. Oh, I think I know yeah, it's 27. Um, I get y cubed over 27. And then So from there, I got one third. What is two plus three halves? Yeah, that's seven halves. And then these two together and the, add those. Mm -hmm. So then we got nine halves, which is the same as two over nine. Um, so those two together make 27. Those two together make two. And then one over 81, y to the six over six. Ew, this is wrong. That's why 81 times 6 is 486. That might make the difference. Okay, so 531441 over 486. Ah, yes, that does make a difference. Because now that fraction is this. And that computation I can do. I get 364.5. Now that makes sense because it didn't make sense to me that my volume. So right here, it shouldn't have been 48. It should have been 181 times 6, which is 486. Um, Again, it was just a matter of me seeing what was in my calculator and not typing in, not printing it on my paper correctly. I have to be very careful with that because I've done it twice now. I 
I just need to pay special attention to what I'm typing on my paper when I look at the calculator, okay? Um, which is why I don't look at the calculator a whole bunch because I do do that wrong. Um, okay, moving on to number four. I'm actually going to um, go to another uh, paper, even though I have plenty of paper on this. I have about this much of paper left at the bottom. But I don't want to use it like that because um, it might be long. I don't know how long the problem is going to be. So we shall see. Now, let's see. So we have number four. Okay, so for this one, um, it's asking me to sketch the region. And so I'm going to sketch this region here. So let's see. Again, I got to do this part. Bum, ba, da, da. I'm going to do in blue the x start. So I have x equal to y minus 7 and x equal to 0. Or y equal, if I add over, I get x plus 7. And then, so I added this over and then I swapped the sides, right? And then the same thing over here, we get x equal to 0 and x equal to 7 minus y. So if I add the y over and then subtract the x over, the y would be positive over here and then the x would be negative over there. So if I draw this on one axis, if I draw this on one axis, I'm going to have um, seven. Let's just mark this as seven and then this one is negative seven. So for here, I'm gonna put seven negative seven. Oh, no, that's not right. They need to be at least the same. So whatever that is about right here, maybe. Okay. Um, so for this one, you've got seven and then a positive slope. So up and over, which means it's going to be running this direction. It's going in this direction. And then um, x equal to 0 is actually the y-axis. So that's that line. Then over here, you've got 7 minus x, which means you have a positive 7 uh, y-intercept, but then the slope is negative. So it's going this way. OK, so those are the two um, graphs. And then y is going from 0 to 7, which means the shaded region is this piece in here. So this is for one part, right? That's for that one. And then this part is for the other integral. And that seems to be this graph. Now, they, of course, they want us to find the area. So from 0 to 7. And remember, x is my variable. So this is like a constant, OK? And so we have e to the x plus y times the derivative of this, which is 1 plus 0, or divided by the integral of that. But it's just 1, so I don't have to worry about it. Um, but I do have to evaluate it at this. Um, if you're confused about what I'm doing there, here's what I'm doing. I'm saying let u equal x plus y. And if I do du with respect to x, it's just one dx because this is like a constant derivative of that is zero or just dx. 
So when you're trying to integrate E to the U, and since um, DX is DU, it's just E to the U, right? And then your plus C if you don't have balance, okay? So that's why I ended up with E to the X plus Y. I just did this in my brain, okay? So now I still have to evaluate this with respect to Y. And I've got the same thing over here. So I get the same responses for the integration, um, but my bounds are different. So I'm gonna evaluate it differently. So let's see, we get um, E to the zero minus E to the um, Y minus seven plus Y dy. Remember x is becoming these bounds, right? So we have e, oh, e to the zero plus y. e to the zero plus y minus e to the seven y minus y plus y, dy. So here I get e to the y minus e to the two y minus seven plus e to the y minus, those are gonna cancel e to the seven. Now I am integrating with respect to y. So hmm, this one is gonna require u substitution. If I let u equal two y minus seven, then du with respect to y is gonna be two dy. So du over two equals dy, which means when I integrate it, integral of e to the y is e to the y. The integral of this is gonna have that one half in it. So one half, and then that. Same thing here, we're gonna do, um, this is integral of that is e to the y. This is a constant. So it's just e to the seven times y. And then when I plug in seven, I get e to the seven minus one half e 14 minus seven is just seven. And then when I plug in zero, I get e to the zero minus one half zero minus seven is e to the negative seven. Again, plugging in seven. And then plugging in zero. Now this is just zero because I'm multiplying by zero. So we get, um, e to the seven minus one half e to the seven. This is just one, so minus one plus one half e to the negative seven. Um, e to the seven minus seven e to the seven. And then here I have minus one. So I have e to the seven minus one half e to the seven plus e to the seven minus seven e to the seven. So let's see, one minus a half um, plus one of them minus seven of them. I get negative 11 over two e to the seven. Then I have minus one and minus one, which is minus two. And then I have one half e to the negative seven. So what does it want me to type in there? It just doesn't say. So I guess I have to type this in there like it is. I have a feeling it's wrong, but I'm gonna type it in anyway. Maybe I'll get lucky and get it right, but I feel like that's not right. I don't know the answer, but I feel like this is weird. But I always check because sometimes it's just me not being confident. Um, and then sometimes I'm actually correct. My intuition is on point and I'm actually wrong. See, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. 
<gasps> Let me find my arrow and then I will resume the video. Okay, I think I found where I messed up. It was right here when I evaluated this one. I needed to have plugged in this number first and then the zero. So this one actually should have been positive and then this one should have been negative, which means this would have been positive and this would have been negative. This would have been positive and this would have been negative. So positive, negative, positive, negative. And then what is that going to mean down here? So that means that this is actually a negative e to the seventh. This is actually a positive e to the seventh. That's actually going to be a plus one. And then that's still zero because it's multiplying by zero. Okay. Which actually means that these two guys cancel. And so do those two guys. So I end up with seven minus one half which is 13 over two positive. So I have 13 over two, but positive, not negative. I don't have this constant anymore, um, but I do still have that plus one half e to the negative seven. So let's try to plug in that as our response. It was all just a sign because I messed up the order of those two terms. So let's try again. Yep, now it's correct. Okay, well, thank goodness it wasn't the calculus part. It was just me plugging in the wrong number first. Remember, I'm supposed to plug in the top bound first and then subtract what you get when you plug in the bottom bound. So if I plug in the top bound, I would have gotten this, and then I subtract what I get when I plug in the bottom bound. And so I just swap the signs. So swap them here, swap them here, swap them there, swap them there, right here. And then that's how I got all of these guys, and then the final answer, okay? I am recording, right? I press record again. Okay, cool. Uh, moving on to number five. So number five. Oh, they want us to create it. Hmm. So we know the function, but we need a rectangle with these vertices. So I have to draw it. Okay. So we have zero, 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 one. 3, 1, and, or 3, 0, and 3, 1. So it's this area, okay? So when it's in this order, the x is first and then the y's, the x's are going from 0 to 3. So this x bound would be 3. And then the y's are going from 0 to 1. Similarly, for if I switch the order, now I need to tell you what the y coordinates are. They're going from zero to one, and then the x's are going from zero to three. And I don't know what that computation is, but it's telling me that regardless of which way I do it, it will be the same value. So I don't need to do it twice. I just need to do it once. And if I had done it the other way around, apparently it would have been the same thing. Okay, so if I do this one first, that is um, zero to one, so x is my variable, y is the constant multiplier. So then I have 0 to 1, um, and then that's 9 over 2y minus 0 times y, which is just 0. So this guy is like not really there. So if I integrate this, that's 9 over 2 times y squared over 2 evaluated from 0 to 1 which gives me nine over four times one minus nine over four times zero, which is just nine over four. Okay, now number six. This says use a double integral to figure out what's going on, okay. So you do see that your z is going from zero to this. So that is going to be my z function, which is the same thing as your f of x, y. Okay, 
So that means I'm going to have my double integral and then my function on the inside is going to be the nine minus x, y. I just don't know which variables I want to do. And since they are giving me the equations in terms of y, I'm going to integrate with respect to y first and then x. So the y values are going from the, um, I have to rotate this, okay? So on my paper, I'm gonna rotate it because my brain doesn't function like that. My brain functions like this, right? So basically what's happening in my image is this is turning, it's turning like this, right? So there's my positive X axes and then my positive Y axes. And you've got this line going like this and then a line going like that. Okay, where this is three. And this is y equal to x. I'm trying to write upside down. It's pretty challenging. Okay, so if I turn it back, look at what I got there. Okay, <laughs> that's literally what has to go on in my brain in order for me to figure this out. Okay, so I know I'm not doing it perfectly with the graph paper, right? Because otherwise, that should be three. But just ignore the little boxes on my paper. Um, and then if y is equal to x, then when the y is equal to three, that means that the x is also equal to three, okay? So I know my bounds are gonna be going in y from bottom to top, right? So from this guy, which is x, to this guy, which is three, and then these rectangles are gonna span from the, begin from the left to the right. So for the left, it's just x equal to zero, and then to go all the way to the right, the x is going to get all the way to the x value is 3. Okay. Um, and it says use a double integrate. Okay, so I just they just want the final answer. So I'm going to do 0, 3. And then my variable is y. So this is 9y minus x, y squared over 2. And plug in x and 3 for y. So this becomes um, 27 minus nine over two X. And then this becomes nine X minus X cubed over two. Um, these guys are like terms, so I can clean that up. What is negative nine halves minus nine? It's negative 27 over 2x, and then negative and negative is going to be positive x cubed or 1 half x cubed. I like to have the coefficient in the front. So let's move this up. And there we go. <laughs> so I get 27x minus 27 over two x squared over two plus one half times x to the fourth over four, all evaluated from zero to three. I'm gonna clean it up. So when I plug in three, 27 times three is 50, or 81, sorry. 81, and then 9 times 27 over 4 is negative 243 over 4. 3 to the fourth power over 8 oops, is just 81 over 8. Minus, when I plug in 0, I get 0, 0, and zero, so it's just subtracting a big fat zero. So eight minus two, four, three over, oops, eight minus fraction two, four, three over four, plus fraction 81 over two, eight. Okay, I have a feeling again that this is not right. So, <laughs> Make sure I made, did everything correct. I have 9 minus xy, yep, from x to there and from there to there. That's good. 
So then I get 9y x times y squared over 2. Okay, that's fine. Then when I plug in 3, I get 27. Uh, when I plug in 3, I get 3 squared, which is 9. So 9 has x. Then when we plug in x, we get 9x. When we plug in x, we get x squared times x, which is x cubed over 2. So we did the double thing. We got this. Oh, I got, no, I did negative 9 halves x minus 9x. And I got this. And then the 27. So 27x, negative 27 over 2 times x squared over 2, and then x to the fourth over 4. And what did I do? I cleaned it up. Yep, I cleaned it up. And so then 8. Oh, that's not 8. What am I thinking? 27 times 3 is 81. So I should have done 81 and then all of those fractions. I'm telling you, this is the third time now I have typed in the wrong thing on my paper from the calculator. This is it. That makes more sense. 243 over 8. Okay, yay. We're getting there. We're getting there. 7. Is another one. Again, look at that bottom region. So I know that z is equal to 36 minus y squared. Um, so that's my f of x, y function. And then I know that the y, again, if I rotate it around, you've got y, e y equal to 6. So y equal to 6 is here. And then you have y equal to x, which is there. And this is the region that they create. So if I want to do like this, which is normally what I like to do, we're going to do the y first. So from bottom to top is the y. From left to right is going to be my x. So bottom is y equal to x and y equal to 6. And then the little rectangles are going to span from 0 all the way to this value, which also happens to be 6. So let's do the integration. 36y minus y cubed over 3 from x to 6. So we get 36 times 6 to 16 minus 216 over 3 minus 36x minus x cubed over 3. So 216 minus 216 over 3 is 144 minus 36x plus x cubed over 3. Don't forget to distribute this negative. Okay. Then we have 144x minus 36x squared over 2, x to the fourth over 4, from 0 to 6. 144 times 6, and then 18 times 36, and then 1 third times, what is 6 to the fourth power? this ugly number, minus, I'll get zero, zero, and zero. So it's just minus a big fat zero. So we get eight, six, four, minus six, four, eight, plus one, oh, eight. And I get 324. So let's try it. And here goes nothing. Hopefully it's correct. Okay, you got it right. Okay. So number eight. 
mm, z equal to zero and then z equal to x, y just means that I'm only looking at the function x, y. We all the time we're always looking at the first octant. So the z is positive anyway. So my f of x, y is just the x, y. Okay. But it's also telling me I need to be looking at um, x equal to one. Um, and then this is one. And I've got a curve here. This curve is y equals x to the fifth. Okay. And then you've got this line here, x equal to one. Um, if I wanted, this is my region, and if I want to draw this, I'm going to actually, um, or I don't think it's facing in that direction. Yes, it is. And then the other part's like this. It's just that. Okay. But they did say the first octant, which means I'm not looking at these quadrants, and I'm also not looking at any of the four quadrants below the z-axis. I'm only above the z-axis and in this first quadrant, quadrant in the xy plane, okay? So this is truly the region, okay? And if I draw my rectangle here, remember this is the line y equals zero. So the y's are going from zero to x to the fifth, and then these rectangles are spanning across the x-axis from zero to one. And my function is that xy. Okay, so let's go ahead and integrate this. We're gonna get um, y is the variable. So this is x times y squared over two. Um, and if I plug that in, I'm gonna get x times x to the 10th over two minus x times zero. So that's one half x to the 11th dx which is one half x to the 12 over two from zero to one, which is one fourth x to the 12 from zero to one. Well, one to any power is one, and then zero to any power is zero. So we just get one fourth. Oh, and I do want my function here. And they did do it in the correct order, so I don't have to switch the order. I'm just gonna type in exactly what I did, but I needed to pay attention. I should have paid attention to this because that tells me how I have to do it. Whereas these, and I could pick whichever way I wanted to do it. Oh, got the wrong pencil. What in the world? Oh, it's 12. <laughs> X to the 12 over 12. So 2 times 12 is 24. So I have 1 over 24. Hello. And I didn't even use the calculator that time. I just totally didn't have the right number. OK, there we go. So we did this. We took the integral of that. We plugged in the x uh, to the fifth. We got this. We plugged in the zero. We got that. So this is really gone. So it's just 1 half times x to the 11th. So it's 1 half times x to the 12th over 12, which is 1 over 24 x to the 12. Plug in the 1, you get 1. Plug in the 0, you get 0. And so this is just 1 over 24. But that is finally the end of this particular section. So. See you in the next video.